A big part of the president's Ghana Beyond Aid agenda depends on the prudent exploitation of our natural resources. Now, that's particularly in relation to bauxite. All 900 million ore tons of the valuable rock have been placed under the control of the newly formed state enterprise, the Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation, uh, as we love acronyms in Ghana, known as GIADEC. Now, Koji Yangson visited their new headquarters right here in Accra to find out whether bauxite could succeed where gold and oil have so far failed in unlocking Ghana's sustained development. Now, he answers or he seeks answers from the CEO of GIADEC, Mr. Michael Anser. The president has a vision of Ghana beyond aid. Now, to do that, a number of things need to happen. First of all, and as a nation, we need to start depending more on ourselves. One of the ways in which we can do that is by leveraging the vast natural resources in our possession. One of them, perhaps one of the most valuable, is bauxite. And apparently we have lots of it. So the president has immediately put together a plan to make sure that we leverage on that and do the best business we can with it in order to put our nation beyond aid. So an institution has been set up, the Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation. New corporation, new vision, new leader. Meet Michael Anser. Recently appointed to head GIADEC and be the spearhead of the president's vision. Mr. Ansa, thank you so much for meeting with us today. Thank you, Kojo. It's a pleasure to be on your program today. Mm, pleasure is ours. And of course, the president has placed a massive responsibility in your hands to manage this entire sector of uh, the development of aluminum and related products. So tell us about GIADEC and specifically what your mandate is. Yeah, thank you very much. I think your introduction uh, uh, was uh, you know, clear in terms of the mandate of GIADEC, which is to uh, promote and develop an integrated aluminum industry in Ghana. And uh, this is not something which, um, uh, if you like, uh, we haven't uh, you know, looked at before in the past. But for now, what we have done uh, differently is to create a corporation, to create an entity focused purely on the promotion, the development of the full value chain of everything from bauxite through alumina to aluminum smelting and even down to the downstream industries to own and develop that in a, in a consistent, seamless and also, uh, I'll say, a profound way uh, that can bring a real transformation uh, to the Ghanaian economy. I think that mandate is enshrined in the act that established GIADEC, which was uh, promulgated and uh, uh, given presidential assent uh, in September last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is the basis on which we are working. Uh, it's, it's doing something significantly differently to how we've done mining uh, uh, previously as a nation. And, and here, uh, GIADEC's mandate includes uh, owning uh, a stake in all the entities that we'll create in this. So GIADEC doesn't have any regulatory functions. Uh, GIADEC is purely a corporation focused on the business of bauxite, alumina, aluminum smelting, uh, etc., and working with uh, our partners to exploit this opportunity that we have as a nation. So that's, that's the, essentially the mandate of GIADEC. How does GIADEC compare to, say, uh, the GNPC in the petroleum sector? That's, that's a good uh, uh, question uh, because uh, GNPC obviously is also focused purely on uh, business and, and owning government's interests uh, in everything in the uh, uh, oil um, uh, production, uh, you know, exploration production uh, space. And, and GIADEC likewise is, is focused on developing our bauxite uh, resources, uh, making sure we, uh, uh, like you said, add value to our bauxite reserves. We, uh, you know, build aluminium refineries, build smelters, uh, operate in all of the space, uh, working with other partners. Similarly, uh, you know, uh, GNPC holds uh, stakes in each of the uh, businesses that are created, whether it's, uh, you know, in each of the, uh, uh, whether it's 10 or Jubilee or whatever, they hold stakes in these, working with various partners. We will similarly have special purpose vehicles that will exploit the full opportunity of bauxite mining, uh, alumina refining, and uh, uh, smelting uh, as well. But, but let me, let me uh, take a step back. Uh, you know, this is, uh, uh, interestingly, we have been mining bauxite in this nation for well over 70 years or so. Uh, we have three main reserves of bauxite in Ghana, the Awasu area, 
in, in the Western North region, the uh, Nyinahin uh, reserves in the Ashanti region, and also the um, reserves in the Chebi Tiwa area in the eastern region. And, and there are other uh, smaller reserves, uh, which are part of GIADEC's work is obviously to continue the exploration, to, to be able to get to the point where we can fully put uh, you know, clear figures on the actual quantity and quality of our bauxite. Mm -hmm. and, and to this end, we're carrying out um, you know, mineral uh, resource estimates, uh, working with um, uh, you know, internationally, uh, to internationally recognized standards to, to build this information that we will then use uh, as we engage with our investors. Uh, but on the point of Ghana Beyond Aid, I think it's also important to uh, lay emphasis on um, uh, what uh, a game changer potentially uh, a, a, a corporation like Giadec is where uh, we're, 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 uh, we're, we're taking a decision that you know producing bauxite in its raw form and exporting it in this way which we are doing today uh, we're, we're exporting the region of about a million metric tons of bauxite a year yeah. uh, just out, out of the shores of Ghana and uh, we're not we're not utilizing or, or effectively adding value to it in any way Bauxite as a resource, uh, you know, on, on, on the markets today is uh, sometimes 40, 50, 60 dollars at most uh, per ton. Uh, if you refine this uh, to alumina, you're looking more like uh, $400 uh, per ton. And uh, uh, by the time you're uh, selling primary aluminium uh, for, uh, through the smelting process, you're looking at, you know, 1,700, um, you know, depressed market today in a sense, but uh, 2,000, 2,400 even uh, is, is read those sort of benchmarks. So mm. you're looking at a significantly different uh, way of value creation in a way that you capture uh, in Ghana for the benefit of Ghanaians and also the, the full multiplier impacts that would have. So you're looking mm. at employment, you're looking at uh, the, the, the broader economic impact, you're looking at the social impacts, you're looking at all these areas. And I think this gives us a unique opportunity to do this in a, in a thoughtful way, to manage the entire value chain, uh, working with world-class partners uh, uh, to do this. You know, so uh, you know, we, we, we have uh, ambitious plans in that sense. We're looking at um, uh, building a corporation that will be best in class globally we're looking at uh, you know we have a vision to be the the foremost uh, integrated aluminium industry uh, corporation in Africa and uh, you know as we speak today there are about three other countries in Africa where you've got aluminium smelters etc but no African country has a full value chain mm. and we've set uh, our minds to this uh, the act of parliament establishing GIADEC um, you know relates to this uh, but of course we also look at regional cooperation I and mean, if you look at uh, Guinea, for instance, they have the largest bauxite resources globally, uh, yeah. by far the largest. Uh, Ghana, 900 million to about a billion or so, uh, potentially more, uh, but Guinea more like uh, 7 billion plus. So, you know, just next door we've got uh, 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 resources in that, in that regard. But, you know, we're looking to build a globally competitive integrated aluminum industry in Ghana. That's our focus. Now, um, you've mentioned that figure that we keep hearing, 900 million tons. Uh, how did we arrive at that? Bear in mind, we haven't yet yeah. verified. Yeah, again, good question. I think, um, you know, Ghana is, is, a, is a mining nation, I can put it uh, that way, you know, from gold to manganese to other resources. Uh, we're resource rich, you know. Uh, God has blessed us with uh, all these significant resources. Uh, bauxite is one, and uh, if you look at the data that we have, historical data going back to the 1940s, uh, refreshed in the 50s and 60s. Uh, the whole aluminium, integrated aluminium industry idea was looked at in the 60s, uh, leading to uh, the, the building of uh, Valco mm -hmm. uh, in 67. Um, you know, since then the aspiration has been to use the bauxite reserve. So a number of studies have been carried out to assess the quantity of bauxite we have as a nation. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's fair to say that whilst these um, uh, studies are dated, uh, they give a clear indication of, of the quantity of bauxite, even the quality of bauxite that we have across mm -hmm. the three main reserves that I talked about. Uh, like I said, Awasu has been mined uh, for a number of years now, uh, for, for you know, 70 odd years now, and uh, clearly uh, it's a business, a viable business has been held variously by different companies. Today we own 20% uh, of the business that is Ghana Bauxite Company, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know, 
uh, getting back to the figures, uh, the, the, the historical data resists. More recently uh, as well, uh, you know, successive administrations have looked at uh, this uh, uh, area and uh, private sector companies have been here and carried out various studies uh, from the 70s and 80s and even more recently, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in the in the noughties. So we've got some data, uh, historical data. What's GIADEC have done, of course, uh, as a basis for uh, driving, uh, and we'll come to the plans, dri mm -hmm. driving what is uh, uh, an ambitious plan, is to make sure that the, the mineral reserves we talk about are bankable reserves, to make sure that the, 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 the studies that, um, uh, or, or rather the, the means of estimating the reserves we have is in line with international standards. Mm -hmm. So we commissioned um, you know, uh, uh, work in this area as we speak to carry out mineral resource estimation, verification of the resources that we have. And these would speak to the actual quality quantities and, qu and, and quality of our bauxite. Uh, th there is no doubt we have bauxite. There is no doubt it's in the region of about uh, 900 uh, million metric tons. Uh, there is uh, very recent studies, more recent, you know, when I say recent, I mean like in the last 10 years, uh, that have uh, uh, even in some cases uh, uh, um, given estimations that are more than that, but you know, we're talking of uh, some studies that give you less inform uh, less uh, reserves, some that give you significantly more. It's important that we, we uh, button down on this and um, uh, more importantly, use the current international standards which will be acceptable as we enter into uh, you know uh, reserve based funding we talk about uh, this to various inst uh, financial institutions etc we need to use international accepted internationally accepted methods of measurement so when so will we know for sure the studies we're carrying out to be completed uh, in fact, uh, as we speak uh, this month at the end of oh. this month, uh, we're, we're going through a process uh, with um, uh, uh, various uh, investors who've expressed interest, and that's information that they need uh, to mm -hmm. be able to uh, do go ahead and uh, make uh, you know full uh, proposals for refineries, etc. So, 900 million is actually a, a conservative estimate, if you will. Uh, I, I, I would uh, like to use words <laughs> like that, but, but you know, I think I think. Uh, I, ho I hope we'll be pleasantly surprised uh, uh, okay. at the end of the day. Yeah. What, what, what would be the, the, the monetary value of 900 million tons of bauxite? Again, I think that is um, uh, a difficult uh, uh, estimation to make. I'll leave that to the, uh, the specialists to do that. And like I said, once we've done this mm -hmm. and we've done the sort of resource-based lending and et cetera, values will be put to this by financial institutions in terms of what we do, what, what, mm -hmm. how we can leverage this for, for any uh, transactions that we will do in mm -hmm. future. Uh, you know, you can do the math in terms of uh, what the value of bauxite is or what the value of uh, uh, other things are. But of course, it's important that you don't mm -hmm. just throw these numbers around. There's also the issue of uh, uh, what, what it actually costs to, 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 to um, uh, harness the, re uh, the, the resource. You know, yeah. so, so all your input costs, all the operating mm -hmm. costs, et cetera, et cetera, will speak to uh, what you ultimately get in terms of your margins and mm -hmm. profitabilities and things like that. So these are things that we're, we're working uh, through, what we work through. and. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we're, we're clearing our minds on that, but we need the actual uh, estimations uh, before we, we uh, start uh, banding so that. I, well. I understand that in real terms you would have to factor in so many things. Yeah. For example, the fact that we wouldn't be just taking the bauxite and selling it. Yeah. We would probably be adding value and you know, that would yeah. obviously change the, the, yeah. the value of the, yeah. the, mm -hmm. the thing you're selling. But I suppose just to paint a picture for our audience, if somebody took 900 million tons of bauxite to sell at market value today, what would that be? Do the math. I mean, it's it's, uh, it's uh, whether you're looking forty dollars, fifty dollars, uh, whatever. Mm. Uh, they, that's what you multiply by. You know, mm. it's, it's 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 a commodity at the end yeah. of the day. So the commodity prices do fluctuate, mm. uh, and and that's what you have to look at. But uh, you know, we we want to make sure uh, the information we share out there with mm. the public is is uh, fully validated by fair third enough. parties, etc. So mm. so I'll, I'll like to you know once we get to that's that point, we'll, we'll make that we'll make that statement. That's fair. But either way, what this means is that we're looking at a very uh, well uh, an organisation. Deck, which is in charge of quite a large uh, amount of resources. Uh -huh. you know. <sighs> Tell me, what are the challenges that you foresee you know, holding a position like this and having a mandate like what the president has placed before you and, and such a large value of resources in which many interests will, will be established? What, what are some of the challenges you foresee in this, in, in this role? That's a, that's a tough question. Um, I mean, first of all, uh, uh, the, the, the president needs to have a degree of confidence in 
who he's asking to to mm. lead this and and for that you know i'm uh, uh, you know uh, thankful that i have the opportunity to to make a contribution uh, to the development of our nation in this way mm. uh, but then it's 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 a tough uh, role it is not a one-man role you know we have a, an organization we are building an organization we're developing an organization we've got significant expertise uh, in bauxite mining in ghana mm. there, are, there are people who've operated in this space uh, we've got valco that's been operating since 1967 in fact uh, uh, we are in the enviable position of exporting talent uh, mm. uh, in, in, in that in that regard and and there are a great deal of uh, uh, people that i can fall on and my team can fall on uh, in, in, in developing the expertise that we need to drive this. I see this as a team effort and uh, all the people who are working in GEADEC today, who will work in GEADEC tomorrow, mm. uh, is, are, are going to be uh, the, the key to our success. Mm. Uh, it's about building uh, a culture of uh, integrity and mm. uh, uh, focus on what our vision is, what our mandate is, what we are doing, and working collaboratively with, with a broad uh, 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 group of people. And when I say a broad group of people, everything including our stakeholders, the community, we're going to impact uh, civil society organizations, um, allied uh, uh, industries and companies in Ghana, etc. Bringing all these constituencies together and building that collateral that makes us a strong organization. This is not um, something that we're doing just for the now, it's something that we're building for the future. Mm -hmm. So the culture, the values, the things that we inculcate into the building of this organization is going to be absolutely vital to its success. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we're focused on doing. I think, uh, uh, of course, the, 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 the leader or the, the CEO role is important, and, and, and a, a lot of uh, emphasis is placed on that quite rightly. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's all about the team. It's about the ethos of the organization. It's about what we can drive, and it's about but our focus mm. on uh, executing on that mandate and building a viable business uh, mm. for this nation. Right. Now, um, th there are examples of uh, state enterprises yeah. that have had massive mandates, yeah. and we've we've had occasion to be concerned sometimes about the way, the direction they've taken. We mentioned GNPC mm -hmm. earlier, not so long ago they were in the media for um, how they spend uh, their corporate social responsibility right. money and so forth. One thing is clear, in, in every society, politics is a very strong factor mm. uh, when it comes to the management of enterprises like this. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, have you anticipated the possibility of political interference and what's your plan to combat it if, mm. it, if it rears its head? Mm. Yeah, thank you for that question. I think um, it's important that we look at the philosophy that's established GIADIC. It's not, it's not so much about uh, yes, it is today a state enterprise, is, is, is as in it's owned 100% by the, by the state. Yeah. Uh, but the state, you know, at this stage, you see this only as an incubation. We're, we're incubating a company that we know and we believe and trust will grow to become something significantly bigger than what it is today. Uh, to do so, it's not going to be uh, only uh, state led, it's, it's, you're going to have some private sector input into this. And uh, if you ask me five years from now, 10 years from now, what GIADEC will look like, it will be a totally different organization. Uh, it will have uh, shareholders uh, significantly uh, different to what it is today. Of course, today is 100% owned by government. There could be uh, you know, injections or rather uh, equity uh, uh, opportunities for uh, Ghanaians and you know, for uh, others. Uh, but, but, but it will not be, the, the idea is not to build a state enterprise that is you know will always perpetually be owned 100 percent by the state mm. so you uh, anticipate it will be privatized at some point well I, 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 I wouldn't go as far as that you know even the, 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 the if you look at our business model the the entities we're going to create uh, you know GearDeck is going to take a 30 percent stake and GearDeck's 30 percent stake is obviously 100 percent held by government mm. uh, we'll take a minimum 30 percent stake in each of these enterprises that we will uh, establish and, and uh, of course, that, that means the other 70% will be held by other interests, mm. uh, you know, foreign investors, Ghanaians, uh, more importantly. Mm. Uh, and, and as we speak, the process that we've launched, we've launched an investor engagement 
uh, process uh, a three stage one. Mm -hmm. uh, the first stage I've identified companies, over 40 companies express interest, and these are companies that are uh, Ghanaian uh, uh, or Ghanaian led consortia. Mm -hmm. There are also uh, companies from across the world, you know, uh, the uh, European, American, uh, Asia Pacific, uh, you know, um, US, UK, Ch Greek, uh, Chinese, other, several other companies uh, mm -hmm. have, have, have bid uh, or expressed interest to do what we're doing. We've gone through a first process, we've shortlisted uh, a number of them. Uh, we are in the second round. Um, we're awaiting these mineral resource estimates to finalize uh, submissions. We're expecting them to, uh, uh, this, this round to come to an end at the end of January, and that will take us through a process. The reason I'm saying this is that we are looking at bringing uh, uh, you know, world-class companies to work and partner with Giadec. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so yes, you can look and say Giadec is a startup of some sort. Yes, it is to a degree, but uh, we're building on you know 70 years of experience in bauxite mining. We're building on uh, you know 50 years of aluminium smelting in Ghana. We're building on significant knowledge that exists here. And what we're doing is. How are we going to revamp our existing businesses, Ghana Bauxite Company and Valco? How are we going to make this more viable, more competitive in this 21st century mm -hmm. uh, using world-class technology, etc.? And we're looking at that. So we're looking at things on the existing business front with a view to uh, uh, bringing investments uh, into our existing businesses that will transform these businesses and make them world-class. Mm -hmm. Then secondly, we're going through um, uh, a, a process, uh, a, a validated process, and, and, and a process that is transparent uh, to to, to uh, identify strategic investors who will come in uh, to make the industry investments to drive the development of the uh, entire value chain. So, mm. so, so that's what I mean by the the the, uh, the, the ownership structure. So, right. so there will be private sector involvement, there will mm. be state involvement, mm. but I think that the, the, the happy medium is, mm. is bringing these two in and bringing uh, private sector discipline. Uh, mm. to to doing this. We haven't done so in, in other uh, uh, areas, but mm. of course we're learning from the experience of uh, state enterprises which uh, dates back to independence, mm. uh, and, and that's what we're doing here. So, so it's, a, it's a bold plan that mm. we're, we're seeking to drive. But in essence, the entity that will still remain retain control of the, the material, the, mm -hmm. the, the bauxite, that will be a state-owned enterprise, or are you saying that there is a likelihood of Giadec itself, not the companies you're forming, but Giadec itself having some private uh, ownership in the future. I'll leave that to uh, you know our corporate uh, advisors to 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 mm. to help us look at the options. And, mm. and and you see, we shouldn't be afraid to look at a broad range of options. Mm. Uh, it's a question of what best delivers value to this nation, what brings the right expertise, what brings the the right finance, and mm. and, and you're dealing with significant amounts of money required to mm. uh, develop this. So we've got to take the best route and the best interests of Ghana. You know, uh, sort of put Ghana first and uh, try to bring the right expertise to develop. This. Yeah. So, so that means privatizing it is actually one of the possible options, just not something you're deciding on now. But yeah, I think, I think, I think, I think you know, it's 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 an emotive word, mm. <laughs> as, as you know. So, mm. uh, for me, for me, it's uh, like I've, I've I've described the structure uh, in terms of the the business model that we're using. Uh, you know, the, the law requires that mm. we hold a thirty percent stake, and until Parliament changes mm. that law, it is the law. Yeah. So, thirty percent stake is a minimum stake that we we'll hold. That stake is held by government. So, mm. that is, is is the beginnings of, right. of the the, the ownership structure. The other 70 percent is in play in terms of uh, bringing investors and bringing, you know, Ghanaians to, to hold uh, stakes in this. And 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 that Ghanaian equity holding is, is absolutely important. We want to use this as an opportunity to develop uh, a cadre of Ghanaians who uh, take, uh, you know, uh, stakes in these enterprises and uh, uh, you know help to develop our capital markets uh, in that sense as well. Mm. Now, what led us here was my question about um, political interference. Yeah. Um, so uh, let, let's let's go back to that because you were in the process of explaining to us what your strategy is yeah. if that were ever to rear its head. Yeah. No, I think, I think we're, we're, we're lucky enough to be uh, to have been set up by a government that believes in private enterprise, that believes in uh, 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 you know all the things that I've talked about. So, mm -hmm. so, so effectively uh, you know, my own background coming to this, uh, I've, I've uh, consistently worked in the private sector um, mm. for uh, many years and in several countries, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, had several experiences around this. And I think where, where this is best is trusting, you know, this, this is a, 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 a government that believes in the market, uh, trusting the market, trusting, of course, where the government, sh the role the government should play. And the way the government should play is, is, to, is to create the uh, environment within which uh, 
enterprise can happen and can develop and that we can use the best skills uh, of Ghanaians, we can bring the best companies together to, to drive economic development. Uh, so, so government has a role to the extent that we create the right environment, we create the, the, the right uh, I'll use the word environment again, that allows companies to make the right decisions. So why should somebody choose to invest in Ghana rather than, say, in Guinea, which has uh, significantly more bauxite resources, or in, in South Africa, where they have an aluminum smelter, or in, in Cameroon, where uh, one of the key inputs of power to the sector, uh, they have uh, uh, good uh, sort of opportunities for hydro. Uh,